Right. So I'm trying to repair this ham egg, uh, 203-7. Uh, picked up a car boot sale for about 20 quid and two years ago. Um, as you've probably seen on the forum post, uh, I have had it working. Um, and then it's been in storage for a couple of years. Um, because I didn't have the space to put it up. And um, I hooked it up about three days ago and it worked and then turned it on the next day and didn't work don't know so I'm just going through some procedures now just to make sure I haven't done anything stupid got a the user's manual and um, having a quick uh, nip through it and it says first time operation um, check the instrument is set to correct mains for the line voltage well we know that 230 volts excuse me I'll just move this light and, uh, and it says before applying power to this oscilloscope, it's recommended that the following simple procedure are performed. So basically, it's just to check to make sure when you turn it on, you turn it on and you can see a trace. For example, I've done all this, so check that all the push buttons are out, rotate all the variable controls with arrows, so the ones, the red uh, variable controls with the pointers are set to their uh, detents, so you'll turn them around and you feel they go dick. Uh, set all the control markers to their mid-range position, so anything with a line on it set to the mid-range. TV SEP and trigger selector levels uh, in the X field are uh, all the way up. And both grounded but coupling switches for channel 1 and 2 and the Y field should be set to ground. So the uh, signal select should all be all the way to, be down to ground. Then it says switch on the signal by pressing the power button. LED will illuminate, indicating working order. Trace display in the baseline should be visible after a short one of 10 seconds. Adjust the Y position, X position control center baseline. Adjust the intensity and focus. I've got a problem with intensity actually, I'll show you in a second. Uh, for optimum sharpness, the trace of the oscilloscope is now ready for use. So on the initial power up, I'll just show you. So as per it's powered on, but all the push buttons, like 18 ohm, X, Y, X, are all turned off. Um, the problem with intensity is the um, knob snapped off. But, from the picture I showed in the forum, the intensity is fine. It hasn't been adjusted, so the intensity should be okay. You can't accidentally move it in storage if the knob there isn't there to adjust it. That's in the mid range, well, roughly in the mid range. Let's get some light on here. Um, roughly in mid range, mid range, mid range. These are all in the ground position. They're all out. That's out. That's out. Power's on, and as you can see, there's nothing. If I adjust the Y position, nothing's shown. If I adjust the X position, Nothing's shown, so bummer. So on the service manual, as you can see, there is a block diagram. So our TB PCB, there. There's some signals going into there, into the CRT PCB, and there's a lot of high voltage on here. I believe it's in around near the 2,000 volt mark, for, according to the for the circuit diagrams for these. Uh, blocks so there's high voltage on here high voltage on here, I need to be careful and uh, appears to be some here for example, it's like 145 volts that'll give you a belt there's 486 volts approximately on there and there that's an AC, so that's going to give you a belt as well however, there are some low voltage things that would be good to check to start as to avoid zapping myself and that's this heater element for the CRT it's only 6.3 volts AC so it's something I can measure safely uh, as well as all the usual DC stuff so like plus 12, minus 12 and all the other things as I've seen from another video uh, they all appear to be marked on the PCBs so this is the schematic for the power supply over here, you've got two CRT heater, apologies for the focus, 
6.3 volts and that's 5 and 6 on this PCB. There is on here, I did see a higher potential a very very high potential bingo there so that'll be for firing your electrons across the CRT, that's 1,890 or minus 1,890 and minus 975 I don't think I will be measuring those voltages with this fortunately it's all I've got Pick this up from Maplin, God knows how long ago. Uh, mainly because it's something you just throw in a toolbox. It's enough to measure these two voltages here and anything that's below 240 volts because this thing can measure up to. It says it's cat 2 rated to 1000 volts. It'll do for now. Oh, looky here. We've got a cover on the back of the CRT and it says danger 2000 volts. Okay. Duly noted. So after some confusion about how to get the lid off, um, it just slides right off after you've taken the back off. Um, this is all the bloody swarf that just fell out of it and there's like, God knows what in there. It feels like, the heck is that? Jesus Christ, that's a, that is a, that's solder! <laughs> that's a big splat of solder, so either someone's dropped it in there, or that's come for off something in there. Something got really hard, I hope that's not the case. God, I've got it open. So, fortunately the PCB seem to be named, so I've got XY PCB, which is that one I believe. This is the underside, it's, it's, you're looking at the bottom of it now. And then what else have we got? We've got these two little PCBs here, so these must be your preamps and whatnot. Yeah, there might be those two PCBs in there. But here's where it gets a bit gruesome. Dear God. Oh my Lord. This thing needs a hoover. Okay, so I managed to... Um, Clean it up a bit. I didn't have a brush attachment on my Hoover, so I had to use a paintbrush and the normal nozzle. <laughs> so, well, it seems to have come up all right. So everything's all cleaned up. Nothing was loose, fortunately. So, but as pointed out by the other chap, is that here are those leads that are flapping in the breeze. Okay, so numbnuts here. Just realised you've been looking at the wrong service manual. He was looking at service manual for the wrong scope. This is actually a two, uh, 203-6, not a 203-7. So I found the uh, right schematic and um, this is the block diagram for it. Uh, to be honest there's not really that much difference, it's just different orientation really. But as you can see you've got your uh, CRT board and your time based board 5 and 6. And as I've suspected Different naming convention for the uh, connectors. This is P5 6. So, this is the connector that I've just unplugged now, which goes from this board to the back of the um, CRT, the tube. And then there's a connector next to it called P Test, which I'm trying to find out information on from the schematic. So, um, just kind of look at that. But one thing I have noticed, uh, and it's a good job I actually double checked, is that the 6.3 volt AC supply for the heater, one end of it is actually tied to the minus 1900 volt supply. So I actually do need to be careful around there. So looking at the schematic again, I found P test on this um, PCB layout, and the trace is there and there, which look like. Uh, the other end uh, connected to via this link to pin 4 on P5-6 and pin 1 on P5-6 and if we go over to our schematic 
So there's one and two and four. Now this is the cathode end, I believe, from K. It goes off to up here, along here, to 1,877 volts. Going back to the block diagram, yeah. P5-6, 1 and 2, filament, filament. Go to 1 and 2 on our CRT. And you can tell which one's pin 1. Bring the light over a bit. Because there's a red mark on this end of the ribbon cable, which plugs into here. And the red the red side of the ribbon cable is nearest this pin. So that's pin 1, that's pin 2. So I expect to see 3.6.3 volts AC on there. If not, I've got no heater. Right, okay, so I'm going for it. Mains is hooked up. Right, I've put some leads on those two pins. They go over to my voltmeter. To there and there. So if I turn this on, I should 6.3 volts, or I should be an exploding meter. <laughs> I'm sure because I've not because I'm connected to one end of the 1,900 volts. So long as I don't get the other end to another equally high potential, it should be okay. All I should see is the 6.3 volt AC. And bingo. 7 volts AC and no bang <laughs> so I would say that's okay um, so yeah we've got voltage to the heater but now we'll see if we if there's anything on there when it's loaded right same again only on the PCB on the back of the CRT fire it up yeah there we go 6.65 volts so once it's loaded up it doesn't drop too far so heating element has not gone short at least anyway so yeah that's right quick thing whilst I'm in this region is I want to test this point here which is connected to this pot here which connects to these two trim pots here and here which either ends is connected to minus 1962 1000 900 so there's a potential difference of 62 volts there so I'm expecting a signal on here that is between not 62 volts okay so I've got that hooked up and I'm just going to test it now yeah round about the middle I'd say that's pretty good so that signal's working okay as well okay so as it's getting late now I think I'll wrap this up but there's one last signal I want to test and I know I can't test it it's G3 which is pin 6 on P5-6 and that goes all the way over to this pot here which is for focus. The other one I measured by the way was intensity but it's connected between 1900 volts and ground and then there's this massive resistor array. They're using all these small values, small resistors I think to build up the voltage, with the withstand voltage because there's only 320 odd K plus 500 K so that's a there's probably about 500k there and there's about 5 meg there so this point here is going to be really high voltage it's going to be definitely out the range of my score, uh, my uh, meter anyway so i come back to that one and look at it tomorrow and see what I can uh, think of a way of how to measure it so uh, I think I'll wrap it up for now real quick one before I wrap it up tonight as well um, this is that Kikasui uh, scope I was on about um, uh, it's, it looks pretty just thrown together. I mean, this looks like it's just bolted on and the screws came loose and there's a circuit in the, that side there. And all it does is a spot appears on it, which you'd expect, because then on the back here you've got X axis input, Y axis input, power and everything. But it's quite a nice little scope. Um, just a shame it just doesn't do anything you have to drive it. Never mind. Anyway, that might be a good project one day, maybe. <laughs>